Hey, it's Wes Roth here. Today we're gonna to look at the only fund that you need to invest in for the rest of your life. This is gonna be the last investing video you're gonna to have to see, I promise. If there's gonna be just one thing that you take away from this video is this. Most people, and this includes professional investors, fund managers, etc., cannot beat the market over long periods of time. This is important to understand. A lot of the market returns that you see is just Fugazi. Fugazi? Yeah, Fugazi, Fugazi, it's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a very dust. People that are new to investing think that as long as the stock that they bought went up, that's good and they're good at investing. Whereas if the stock went down, that means they're bad at investing. A better way to think about this, and this is how professional investors tend to think about this, is how well their investments do when compared to the market as a whole. A common benchmark for this is the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is made up of mostly US companies, the 500 biggest companies in the US stock market. A lot of them are also the biggest in the world by extension. You probably know a lot of these companies. They're Apple, Microsoft, Google, Tesla, Ford, Toyota, Visa, Home Depot, Pfizer, Coca-Cola, etc. So if you put a dollar in the S&P 500 and the stock market goes up, you make money. The stock market as a whole goes down, you lose money. You don't really care about any one particular company doing well or necessarily what happens to it. You don't even really care about the short-term ups and downs of the stock market. In fact, if you invested your money in the S&P 500 back in 1957, when the S&P 500 just started, you would have received about a 10% annualized return year over year on average. You wouldn't have to watch the news, research companies, buy and sell stock, just kept your money in there and lock in your 10% every year on average. Now, if you individually picked stocks, bought and sold, researched companies, poured over the profit and loss statements, and at the end of that period averaged about 8%, while you would have made money and you would have more money in the bank, you would have underperformed the market. After all your efforts, you would have less money than if you just put it in the market and completely forgot about it. This is why a lot of people suggest just buying the S&P 500 and not really worrying about anything else. You will outperform the vast majority of active investors just by doing that. By the way, the S&P 500 is almost identical in terms of performance to the total stock market. The S&P 500 is over 85% of the total stock market. And the difference in their performance over long periods of time is, is pretty small. Picking one over the other is unlikely to make any difference. I stick with the S&P 500 personally, although the total stock market tends to have a lot more assets under management. More people tend to put their money in there. Now, the reason we're mainly talking about US stocks is because since the 1980s, the US government tended to prioritize US stock prices over pretty much anything else. Stocks going up was a big priority for the US government, and it continues to be so. The effect of this was that globally, the US stock market acts like a sponge, sucking up capital from all over the world into the US stock market. Wealthy individuals and institutions, both in the United States and abroad, see the US stock market as a great place to park their money. So with all that said, what is the best place for long-term investors? to put their money for decades and just forget about it. Well, I put all my long-term money into Vanguard 500 Index Fund Admiral Shares, AKA VFIAX, as it's commonly referred to. I do it on a set schedule. I don't try to time the market. I just dollar cost average into it every week or every month. This isn't the most fun way of investing, but it's one that's been proven to work very well over long periods of time. And it frees up my time to then focus on increasing my income so I can increase the rate at which I'm buying these funds. Now I have other active investments that I'm doing, but the bulk of my money goes into these funds and then gets ignored until I'm ready to retire. So I have a question for you. What is your investment approach? I'm curious to know. Let me know in the comments. I read every single one. Thank you for watching.